can red light therapy help with meibomian gland dysfunction? I'm currently doing a series where we're answering people's questions on specific benefits and red light therapy. I did a video previously where I discussed a general red light therapy protocol. And then if you asked a question, then I would do a specific protocol on a specific benefit. Now today's one, we're talking about meibomian gland dysfunction. In case you don't know, this is when the secretory glands in your eyes don't produce either enough or a good quality of secretion, and then your eyes dry out. It's very common, about a third of people in the US have this condition, and in this video we're going to be discussing whether or not red light therapy can help with this. So we've got two studies that we're going to be covering. I'm holding the microphone again today. In the previous video I said I was going to get a new boom stand because I've got a, a height adjustable or electric desk now, so that I can stand as well. But I decided I quite enjoy holding it. So I've gone out and gotten at least a red cord so that we're at least in the theme with red light therapy. But in this video, we're going to jump into two studies, as I mentioned. The first one is a systematic review. So we're looking at red light therapy when it's combined with high pulsed light and whether or not those are effective. And then I have a single study that shows the comparison between these two modalities. So it's going to be exciting to see which one is most effective. If you do have the opportunity to use both, then that's great. But I also want to show, you know, whether or not red light therapy is actually effective for this condition. So without further ado, let's jump into the first study. This one is a systematic review and meta-analysis. The title is Low-Level Light Therapy and Intense Pulse Light Therapy in Meibomian Gland Dysfunction, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. So when it is a systematic review or meta-analysis, we're not just looking at a single study. This is when researchers will gather a whole bunch of studies on the same topic, group the data together, and you can make much better conclusions from this because we've got more evidence. Now, something to look at just in this study. So they did an analysis with 12 separate studies, and they found that low-level light therapy, which is red light therapy, and then IPL, which is intense pulse light therapy, was led to a significant decrease in ocular surface disease index score. Now, I'm not surprised if you don't know what that means, but the ocular surface disease index score is basically a tool that measures how severe dry eye is. So a score ranges between 0 and 100, with 100 being really bad and then 0 being really good. So what they found is that people who did both red light therapy and then the pulse light therapy, they had a significant decrease in their scores in this um, measurement tool. So it was reduced by 22, on average 22.8, somewhere between 22.8 and 29.1 was the average decrease in that score. So that's like a 30% reduction in dry eyes if you were scoring 100. So really good results on that. And there was also a significant increase in both the tear breakup time and then the Schirmer test. So the tear breakup time is basically after a tear forms in your eyes, they measure how long does it actually stay on the surface before drying out. The Schirmer test is just another diagnostic tool and it's measuring how many tears your eyes can produce. So both of these increased, which are great things. And this is in this study, we're looking at, again, a systematic review, but we're looking at red light therapy when it's also combined with intense pulse light therapy. So in the next study, it's not saying that you have to do one or the other, but if you are making the choice between these two, we're going to be having a look at which one was more effective. So this study is titled Low Level Light Therapy versus Intense Pulse Light for the Treatment of Meibomian Gland Dysfunction, Preliminary Results from a Prospective Randomized Comparative Study. So in this study, they had 40 different patients and they were randomized into either of these two groups, either they were receiving the red light therapy or the IPL. And they were doing sessions with either of these modalities four times per week. While there were improvements in both groups, the results of this study showed that the standard patient evaluation of eye dryness score significantly decreased after both red light therapy and IPL, although the improvement was significantly greater in the red light therapy group compared with the IPL group. Patients in the red light therapy group showed a significantly higher increase in tear meniscus height compared with those in the IPL group. Just in case you picked that up, I kept saying red light therapy instead of LLLT. It's low level laser light therapy. Big mouthful means the same thing. That's just why I'm saying red light therapy. But the conclusions of the study, they found that both of them were safe. There were no adverse reactions in the study, but there were better improvements when using red light therapy. And I've done many videos on this channel where we talk about red light therapy and eye health. 
And one of the biggest problems we face in modern society is the amount of artificial blue light that we're exposed to. So modern lighting doesn't have a lot of red and infrared and it has a lot of blue light. Blue light can be toxic to your eyes. It causes a lot of oxidative stress within the cells. And in nature, this would always be balanced by red and infrared light. The sun is made up predominantly of red and infrared light and blue light is present, but it's always balanced out by the red. So red light therapy becomes a tool where you can now supplement with it and allow a little bit of ambient light to enter your eyes. And that way you're balancing out this crazy amount of blue light that we get exposed to from our cell phones, computers, indoor lighting, everything like that. Now the protocol for this, and I've already discussed this in other videos, is extremely easy. Whenever we're targeting eye health, you just need to allow the ambient light to enter your eyes. So I always recommend targeting somewhere like your chest and then keeping your eyes open and just allowing that light to enter your eyes. You don't have to stare directly at the device, but just standing in front of it, allowing some light to enter your eyes for three to five minutes per day is the protocol to follow for this. Something that is very important, most red light therapy protocols, the timing doesn't matter that much. With eye health, we've seen in the research that the improvements are often better in the morning time. Now, this is research that is based on other benefits. So age-related macular degeneration is when we see these improvements are much better in the morning. But I think to be on the safe side, although we don't have studies comparing times on this condition just yet, you may as well do it in the morning to make sure that you're going to get the best results. If you want to check out some devices that would be great for this, I recommend either the MyLight Move or the MyLight MIDI. The Move is a nice portable device. You can set it up on your desk and allow that light to enter your eyes in the morning. The MIDI is a bit of a smaller panel. If you are looking for other benefits, you know, like improving your sleep and you need to cover larger surface areas, check out the Max and other bigger panels in this range. But I will leave a link in this description to both the MIDI and the Move so you can go and check those out. They come with a 60 day trial period. So if you are someone who's suffering with dry eyes, you can try that device for 60 days and if it doesn't actually help to improve your symptoms, you return it and get 100% of your money back. If you have any questions from today's video, or if there's any other benefits you want me to create a video on, please drop it in the comments section below. Otherwise, I hope that you have a great day further, and we'll chat again soon. Cheers.